Yes, welcome everyone here to the Smash Sports Show right here on Smash FM here on a Thursday. Of course, uh, let's head up to our friends up in Queensland and, of course, being with the, the ladder leaders at the moment in the, the NPL women's competition, that is Brisbane City. Of course, uh, they'll be um, hoping to continue that winning streak as they take on Mitchelton uh, this coming weekend. And, of course, we've got three very special guests uh, joining us right now to tell us a bit about it. Thanks all three for joining us. Thank Hello. you for having us. Uh, okay, all three to introduce yourselves and what position all three play on the field. Uh, my name is Mia Green. I'm 17 and I'm usually a midfielder, but I've just recently started playing centre back, which I'm enjoying a lot. I'm John T. Fisher and usually I play winger and I'm 18 years old. Um, I'm Tolly Heatley and I'm 17 and I'm playing left or right winger. Tell us a bit about the amazing start to the season. It's really good. Definitely, well, we definitely expected to do well, but I think we've blown people's expectations a bit out of the water. Had a tough, had a tough first five games. Had the top three, top three teams from last year. We came away with two wins and a draw from that. So I think we've just set ourselves up really well going into like starting off and then heading into the next how many rounds? We got 22 rounds. Yes. <laughs> Long season. So it's just good to get a good start out of that. Last week you played Gold Coast um, yeah. and you won uh, one nil. Tell us a bit about that game. I think we did well. It was like a very even game for mm -hmm. majority of like the 90 minutes. It was kind of hard to expect what was going to happen coming into that game because obviously Gold Coast did do really well last season mm -hmm. and coming up into a new league, like it's different and getting used to like playing against them was good and everything. But I think we outperformed them. But yeah. yeah, at the end of the game, it was just kind of like a dog fight. Like we were up 1-0 and just wanted to keep that lead, Finish so it was it good. Yeah. It's definitely one of our best team performances so far, I'd yeah. say. Yeah. Just maintaining it throughout the whole game and just even better to come out with the win with that. But well, now you're three and one, uh, three and a draw. Uh, How many? Yeah, I think it's three. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, how does that feel um, going into the new competition? Because you actually won the, uh, won the, um, the Premier League uh, ones competition last year. Yeah, yes. yeah. So... Well, these two were at QAS last year who played in NPL, but myself, I played here. We went through undefeated all last season and then came out as Prems and won the grand final. So that was really good. So I think just having that already just put us in a good mindset, just coming out with that. We've got something to prove in this league and we're here to stay and we're here to play and we're here to win. <laughs> <laughs> two of you just came from the QAS who played in the NPL women's competition last year or the last couple of years. Why did both of you choose Brisbane City? Personally, I aged out of QAS, so I had to move on to a different club. And I was, like, deciding whether or not to move states or to stay in Brisbane. And I decided to stay here because of, like, the good coaching system they have here and kind of the pathways into different systems from Brisbane City. And I have a few friends at Brisbane City and... Have always heard good stuff about it, and yeah, so just good coaching system and facilities and everything. So yeah, yeah. Um, I moved here. I still had a year left, so I could have stayed there. But I decided to move because I wanted to be more surrounded by senior women and get to know the senior environment and just be, uh, put under a lot more pressure in training and games. I think that will improve me the best, and I think it's been really good so far. So yeah. It's <laughs> Did both of you know at the time when both of you at QAS last year that you're both going to Brisbane City? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I knew I knew earlier that I was gonna go and I totally knew that I was going. Yeah. And it was just like yeah. Tully was kind of in yeah. talks with people and then it was just helping each other out with the move kind of towards the end. But yeah. Yeah. How good to have these two on your team, uh, especially coming out from the QAS. Oh, it's good. Well, we all started out at QAS together. So we go back to when we were, what, 12, 13. So I left QAS a few years earlier and got into the senior environment. But before then, I just had my time at QAS. But it's so good to just have have some people my age back in there. But I love I love the older girls, but sometimes, sometimes I need... Need to be from my age there, but no, I've just really enjoyed playing with them again, better than playing against them, to be honest. <laughs> Did you try to convince them to come over to Brisbane City? Be honest. No, actually, well, 
I had, well, John T knew, you knew quite early last year. And we're playing against each other for a school game or something. And she kind of, she just whispered it to me. She was like, I'm coming, I'm coming over next year. I was like, no, you're not. And she's like, yeah, I am. And then, so we kind of knew. And then when Tully let me know too, it was kind of all three of us just, well, we kept it quiet for a little bit until they announced it. But yeah. How's the preparations been like for the Mitchelton game uh, on the weekend? But yeah, our training got rained out on Monday, so that oh. wasn't ideal. <laughs> Not ideal, but oh, it was probably good to have the rest yeah. after we've had a tough, like a big couple of weeks. Then we came in Tuesday, had a really good session Tuesday. Um, that was a long one. Then we got video tonight. Then we'll just go over our game plan tonight in training and just the same as we've been doing the whole time, just get set for the weekend. Seems to be working, so we can get Tell us a bit about this coach, Dave. Oh, no. oh. <laughs> we love Dave. He's a big teddy bear. He tries to act like he's a... <laughs> he tries to act a little tough, but we know he's a softie. No. no, he's great. He pushes you like yeah. on and off the field to become a better person and a better player. So I think that was one of the main reasons I came to City was that Dave actually cares about you off of the field as well. And like he actually pays attention to what you're doing away from football. So it's good. Yeah. yeah, I came for the same reason. I've heard good things from Dave and just wanted to be coached by him. So, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure he'll, he'll like hearing that. Uh, big teddy bear. Um, <laughs> <laughs> How special is this team? You know, coming from... Uh, of course, PL uh, Queensland won to now all of a sudden um, now on top of the ladder uh, in NPL. Yeah, I think it's just really good. I think we've got a really, really good mix of senior players to like junior players coming up trying to make their mark in the league. And I think sometimes in teams that balance can become a bit uneven, which can negatively impact it. But I think our senior players are just really there and they know, like, we're here to win, but they're really just mentoring all of us and trying to get us ready for that next level because they've been there and they've done that. And I just think that creates such a special bond within the group because we don't have the coaches just there for us. Like, we've got the girls around us who are who are wanting us, like, to succeed and pushing us to that next level I, as well. I think it's so special, the amount of depth we have in our squad. Yeah. Like, no matter who's coming off the bench, like, or who's filling up the bench, like, Whoever's coming on, it's amazing and they always make it like an impact and everything. So it's just great to have a squad that you can rely on everyone for to do their like job and everything. And it's good, like a like a family. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk a bit about uh, all three of your football journeys. Where did it all start and why did you choose it? Um, well, when I was younger, I probably started playing competitively when I was seven or eight. But my younger, older siblings, sorry, they played when I was younger. So I grew up around it and got to know the environment. So I started playing. Um, I actually moved from Cairns, I think, three years ago to move to Brisbane and start taking it more seriously and hope, hoping to go further. I, I moved down from Cairns when I was uh, 15 to start playing more competitively or not more competitively, but just challenge myself to go further um, and I just moved here to play for QAS and now obviously I'm at Brisbane City. I grew up in the sunny coast so I started playing when I was like three and none of my family played so I don't know how I got into it <laughs> it's too long ago to remember that but I started playing when I was three and played up until I was 12 and then moved to Adelaide for three years and played over there in like the equivalent of the QAS program over the, over there so it was the just the SANTC team Played for them for a few years and then moved back to Brizzy because Adelaide doesn't give as many opportunities as Queensland and like New South Wales. So moved back to Brisbane and um, started playing for QAS and played there for like three years and at Brisbane City now. So yeah. Yeah, and I started over at Peninsula Power when I was 10 or 9 or 10. Played a couple of years over there in the boys comp. And then when I was old enough, I moved to Morden Bay and played in the under 13s NPL. And then the year, so I was 12 then. And then the year after that, when I was 13, that was the first year QAS introduced the teams going from 17 to 13s. 
So I was there. I went there for two years. Um, and then in 2021, that's when Dave moved over to Morden Bay with a lot of the senior girls that are at Brisbane City now. And I left QAS then and went and played for Morden Bay for two years with those girls. And then a lot of us made the switch to Brisbane City last year and then been there ever since. Got a follow up from, the, from your answer just then. So when you verse, when I was in at Brisbane City, but when you get to verse, obviously Morden Bay is not in the competition anymore, but um, you got you still got Peninsula Power uh, in your competition. Um, how strange has it been when you had to verse against them? I don't think that one's too bad. Just I I never really got into the girls program there, so I don't know as many people over there. I think it's more strange when we play against QAS yeah. because we all we, there's a lot of girls who are still there who we all play together, and that one's always quite a fun game. Like always a bit physical, always a bit of bit yeah. of banter right, in the right game. game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'd say QAS over power is more more where the the rivalry's <laughs> at there. <laughs> I'm sure you haven't versed them yet, have you? We have, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I have to ask, how strange was it and how much banter on the field was it between you and your teammate, uh, your former teammates? <laughs> uh, it was it was like one of the funnest games I've ever had to play because it was just like, obviously me and Tommy played there last year, so we played with 99% of the girls that were out there. Like, it was just fun because it's you're playing against your old team and it's kind of like you absolutely want to smash them like because coming out of that game and like whoever wins gets the bragging rights yeah, yeah. so it was like more kind of motivation and everything but it was good like on the field everyone's like you still haven't banter with everyone trying to get in their heads but then and when everything. it's off the field yeah it's like just... off the field it's great but it's like on the field it's just good because you're getting in their heads and yeah I've got a yeah. couple I've got a couple people <laughs> that I go after but <laughs> it's all love but yeah. when we're on the field yeah you've got to yeah. get them <laughs> Yeah. All three mentioned right at the start what position you all three play on the field. If you had a dream position where you, ha- uh, where you would like to convince Dave to put you, where that be? Be honest. Definitely not full back <laughs> or wing back. <laughs> anywhere. I'm actually happy anywhere but there. Too much running for me. I'm happy with – I'm really happy with where I am because it's, like, between an attacking midfielder. Okay. But, yeah, but, like, the inverted wingers, I, I love it. It's my favourite position, so – I'm playing there, which I'm happy with. Yeah. Um, I also love playing inverted winger. It's really good. But I definitely wouldn't want to play keep goalkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, but you're getting too many running. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what about ten? Oh yeah, but ten's kind of inverted winger <laughs> or a ten. Ten's I love ten, but Lanny's pretty pretty good. <laughs> What does the sport of the world game mean to all three of you, especially being part of Brisbane City? And then the second part of that question is, what have all three learned from each other on and off the field? I think, especially after the world, after the World Cup, um, it's just been great to see how involved girls want to get at the club. Like we never, growing up, there was always the older girls playing. But I think there was a lack in connection between the junior and the senior. But all three of us actually have started helping coach junior teams here. So like 11 girls. And it's it's so amazing to watch. Like they're buzzing to come to our games when they're at their games. They're the loudest ones in the crowd. They've been made me this friendship made us, bracelet. Made us bracelets <laughs> and our names on it. So I think the game, like it sounds, it sounds funny to say, but the game's more than us. Yeah. Like it's just, it's great to see what it's doing for the junior ones coming up and like we're not even that old but the impact we're still having on them like I I wish I had that when I was younger like I never ever had a female team to look up to like it was always male like yeah and it's just it's wonderful to have like little girls at our games and everything because it just like it's It's again yeah it's more motivation as well to do well for them and everything and try and put us in a good spot for them yeah so that's good yeah yeah it's just really good having the female role models there for the younger girls and just showing them that we care and they care for us, obviously. Yeah. So that's really good for us as well. It gives us motivation on the field. And then do you wanna, what, do, what do we learn off each other? From each other, I love having Mia behind me on the field because she speaks to me and kind of tells me to back myself when going up against opponents. And it really, it's like, again, the, with the motivation, I'm very like, I love motivation. And when Mia's behind me, it helps me a lot on the field. 
um with Holly she I love how hard she works when she's on the on and off the ball and she's like relentless kind of and yeah that's what I've learned <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay um same as John T I really love Mia how she's so motivational and she tells she's like hard on you so she tells you what you need to work on but she also gives you positive feedback <laughs> so constructive, yeah, so constructive <laughs> criticism so that's really good and John T you're also a workhorse <laughs> she, and she's a little devil she, she, on the field she's literally like a Tasmanian devil she was <laughs> <laughs> She even knows. No. <laughs> she just, she's so good. Her work rate is relentless. So I love that about her as well, Holly. Yeah. I definitely, I think the main thing, well, we definitely play different positions. So it's not for me so much in that way, but just having you guys back in the team and just having people my own age gives me the confidence because I'm like, I'm looking at them like, yeah, if I'm telling them they can do it, like, I've just got to back myself here too. And it can be an intimidating thing like being younger and playing in a senior senior environment, like you really got to earn your stripes and get your confidence. But I think just having a group of young people just helps we help each other get that confidence and build off each other. Um, any future ambitions in sport of the world game as silly as that question sounds? Oh, obviously everyone wants, everyone wants Matildas, you know, that's the top goal, World Cup, Olympics, that type of thing. But for now, I really, I'm just looking to enjoy my football. I feel like if it it'll come, it'll come if it's right. But I think it's just you gotta have the love for the game. Don't want to kill that off. So yeah. I'm just looking to enjoy my footy and just see where it can take me at this point. Yeah, I agree. With me, obviously Matilda's is like the main goal, but I also want to go overseas and play hopefully in England one day and play play in the Premier League, which is a goal of mine. So yeah. Um this is a bit far fetched, but my future club hopefully will be Barcelona. I really want to play there, but just got to keep working hard. But not far fetched. I mean. <laughs> so I've got to ask this: Why Barcelona? Um, it's a technical team. Yeah, you? they're a very technical team, and I just love how they play. And I think they've done a lot for the women's game over there. So very inspirational. Let's finish off a couple of lighthearted questions about your teammates there at Brizzy City, uh, which is who had the most embarrassing moment on the field this season so far? And what was it? Oh I'm going to say Tully. Yeah, I'm going to say Tully as well. Would you the most embarrassing? Tully has got pretty <laughs> dumb a couple of times, like absolutely folded by the like, commitment is there, but it was she's had some funny falls. Eastern Suburbs, she got absolutely demolished by the keeper and like flew about yeah. 16 from the air and hit the ground so hard. Are you always just tripping over? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to go to Tully, yeah, for, that Tully for that one. Tully, do you want to defend yourself here? Um, <laughs> yes, I do. I just, wait, I don't really know what to say, but. <laughs> really know how to respond to that. Lainey's really funny. Oh, yeah. yeah, she's just really funny. She doesn't really fall over, but when she does, it's hilarious. <laughs> Who's the comedian, the best singer, and into their TikTok slash be real? Um, I reckon Mia. Mia's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> Mia's TikTok. <laughs> Amazing to take talk. Hey. Best singer. Take a guess. I think. Hmm. Who would be good? I always see Steph singing, but I always I see like Tilly's. Tilly's got a voice in it. Yeah. I feel like. Oh, yeah. And Bill. Oh, it's actually Tilly and Billy. When we won yeah. the grand final in the yeah. premiership, those two on the table. Oh, Billy was up on the table <laughs> in the change room singing. So yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to give it to those two. Comedian? Uh... I think everyone's kind of funny in their yeah, own ways. Everyone bounces like, off each yeah. other. Eh? Like it's like, yeah, bouncing off each other and like when the jokes start falling around, <laughs> yeah. like it's, just, it's just funny from everyone. So I think we're all funny in our own ways. Do either of you have a pre-game superstition or ritual? <laughs> oh, that is some to John T. I I don't even have enough fingers and toes to count the amount of rituals and superstitions I have before games. <laughs> like, everything from the night before has to be the exact same every single game and like it's just who I am, I guess. But yeah, heaps of them. But my main one, like before a game, I always have the same like perfumes and deodorants that I put on and I put them on in a specific way mm-hmm. right before I like kick off. And it's the same like when I rock up and then when I put my um, warm up jersey and then when I put my game jersey, it's the exact same. Like it's, that's a big one for me as well. 
you have any songs? Um, I don't really have any main superstitions. It's mainly just how I look after myself before the, like the day before and then the day of, like what I eat and what I drink, mm-hmm. how much I drink. Yeah, I, I've got, we got to have a V before the game. <laughs> it's always going to have my V. And it's kind of hard when you play night games, but during like competitions and stuff, my breakfast has to be two wheat bix with three slices of banana on each wheat bix and I have to eat like the left one first and then the right one. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's, 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 that's the only one that's ever been that's a good. bit like. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> Can you please clarify how did that come about? Okay, when I was oh when I was like 12, I was just I was at a competition and I was like under 15 and I ate the same thing every single morning while playing into Wumba. And I just I did it the first day and I was like, oh yeah, I played pretty good today. We'll do it tomorrow. Yeah, I played pretty good that day, so forth. And then I ended up making the team at the end. So I was like, yeah, right though. I'll keep this going. To work. Okay. And then I've just kept it going through all of our competitions and it seems to be giving me luck. So I've just stuck with it. Any pre-game pump-up songs? And who's the responsible oh, one for the Okay, we have oh. one. One song before we, right at yeah, the end. Last song before Dave comes in to talk, we have to play Rich Baby Daddy. And okay. then it's we had it last year. We had I forgot what the song was, but we had to let it play out the whole way. And then, it's like a five and a half minute song. Yeah, so we it have goes to like walk perfectly for when Dave like walks in at the end of it. And, and if anyone tries to cut it short, yeah, oh, I, you'll hear about um, it. Georgie Worse is in is in charge of the music. So I gave her my speaker on the weekend and just <laughs> get that out of my way, put the pressure on her. Finish with a two part question. The first one is what would be your advice to people that should get involved in the sport and especially heading down to Brisbane City? I think. Brisbane City is like a really good like culture and like environment yeah. to be involved in and like no matter what coach you're surrounded by they're always looking after you like we have coaches from like the under 11 girls that we're involved with that will make time out of their day to come and watch our games and watch our trainings and like it's just really supportive like a big like a big family that's why like I love Brisbane City because everyone's here yeah. for each other and everything so I think it's a really good club to be involved in. Yeah, yeah, just getting involved in the game. I just think it's so good to see. And I think a lot of people, like, the World Cup's just had such a big impact on it, especially in Australia. But just how quickly the women's game is progressing and how popular it's become. So I think just that, that's yeah. got people involved and wanting them to get involved. And at City, they just have, they have such a good junior program. They really care about the juniors and their progression into the senior program, you know, like they, they're looking at the long run. And I think they're really well looked after. They're just, yeah, like John just said, it's just a genuine family and genuine care about you as a person and your career. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. If you're just looking for something to get involved in for the younger kids, even if they, yeah, if they just want to have fun, um, Brisbane City is a really good environment for that, for the youngers, even if they don't want to be. <laughs> um, in the competitions and just have fun. The second part of that question is, well, actually I will end up with, I've got one more question after that question, but the second part is, whereabouts is your home ground for everyone in the Brizzy uh, area that should get down there? Imperial Court Stadium in Newmarket. The lighthearted question to finish off, which is, do the team have a fire system? And if so, who's caught the most fines? Actually, we were just talking about this. We don't have one yet, but we're in the process of getting one involved. <laughs> this girl will have the most fines. This girl will have the most fines. Yeah, fun. probably. You're always forgetting something. <laughs> I'm actually, no. I actually nah, Lainey, Lainey, would, Lainey and Tilly would be up there for yellow cards. Uh-huh. Tully's there for forgetting <laughs> stuff, yeah. But we're bringing it in. It's yeah. not in yet. But it's oh. Making up the moment. But uh, all three, thank you so much for giving up some of your time before training. Uh, best of luck against Mitchelton this Saturday night. And uh, let's hope uh, you can uh, continue that winning streak and uh, still lead the competition after round six. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you for having us. No worries. And, of course, uh, you want to get down there because they are playing against Mitchelton uh, on March 16, which is two days' time. And, of course, uh, you can support Mighty Brisbane City.
uh, hopefully to a pr premiership uh, by September uh, this year. There's more on the Smash Board show right after this. Don't go away here on the TT Celebration.